faithful God put on human flesh to bring faith to us to have no faith. The faithful God loved us enough to lay down his life for us when we didn't even want it. When he was from you, you weren't looking for God. He came looking for you. He came looking for you. He drew you to him. He drew you to him. And the Holy Ghost is here in this place. So I'm privileged to be here. This is a great church. You have great pastors. I, uh, I asked to stay at their house last night, which I don't ever stay at people's houses. But I said, I'm going to hang out with them. And, uh, you know, I can tell you the truth. Like, they care for you. They pray for you. And you want to be around people that care about you. Amen? Amen. Your family is something that the world is in great need of. And multiply is a family. It's a family to plant your family. It's a family to grow with. It's a family to shine with. Amen? Amen. We're going to be incredible on this morning. Um, I'm blessed to, you know, just uh, hang out with you guys, talk about Jesus. I'm here to preach Jesus to you. He went to that cross and rose from the dead, and he's here in the room right now. Yeah. He heals every disease. He yeah. drives out every oppression. Mm -hmm. We talked to you guys about the power of God and the anointing. Um, how did we meet again? We met through, through Thomas, Thomas. Yeah, and you came up to when we were pastoring in Orange County. Yep. You came and up to visit. You came up to the like little school thing that we yep. had on Thursday night. Yep. I don't know if we got to let you graduate because you're kind of like, remember that 90s show Parker Lewis where the guy would like kind of just come out of his locker and go to class if he wanted to? It was kind of like that. You know, you just kind of come a couple times. And, but we'd hang out, we'd have meals together, we'd talk about this because this was on their heart. Yeah. And then uh, last year they launched it. I don't know, it was weird. Last year people were walking around with all these things on their faces and all freaked out. I was like, what's going on around Lewis? It's really weird, you know? But God's faithful. Um, you know what? God is going to multiply, multiply. Mm -hmm. He's going to multiply you. You're blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. Uh, this church is blessed to be a blessing. I want to see great works. So, a little bit about me because you guys don't know me too well. Uh, Chris Kildosher, married to Josie. I don't know, they put a picture. Do we have, have it? Oh, there's my wife and my daughter. There's Josie. There's Lily. There's Lily again. <laughs> That's a pretty good picture. <laughs> He told me, he's like, was there any slides you want, like some scriptures? And he's like, what about put your kids on? I was like, that's crazy. Put Josie? That's not my daughter. That's my wife, Josie. She looks like her. She is. She's younger than me. We met in Revival. That's a good place to meet a wife. Is a we met. I, I traveled to Omaha, Nebraska about 10 years ago. Well, we're actually living right now. And I went there to do three days of healing meetings. And it broke out into 17 nights in a row. And the room was a little bigger than this. We had 1,500 people come to Wow. It was amazing. <laughs> Miracles, signs, and wonders. Uh, this crazy, crazy oh, stuff. Man, I could share stories about it for days. It was like Jesus walked into the room and couldn't get him to leave. <laughs> you know, you go to church sometimes and somebody does something, you're like, man, that was awkward. It was like, no matter what people did, it was awkward, but Jesus was not in here. We had a, there was a girl that came in, her name was Sarah, and when she came in, she didn't believe any stuff going on. It was real. And when she walked in the room, she felt the presence of God. She started weeping when she walked in the room. That's all I'm talking about. And his presence is full of joy, and I can pleasure spread them more. He is love, and yeah. his presence is in a place, love is in a place. And wherever love is, all things are possible, because love never fails. Yeah. Yeah. I've been meeting where every single person's been killed, so I don't expect him to come out to that. Come on. Uh, see crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Sarah came in, she didn't believe in the stuff. Uh, my buddy and I were ministering together. I think he said it. He said, God's healing somebody's left knee. Sarah was 16 years old. She had six months of an injury in her left knee from uh, cheerleading. Instantly, she felt this heat go through her knee. No one touched her. No one prayed for her. Just as soon as the word went forth, her knee was healed. Um, and then when the altar call was given, we said, hey, if you're here, you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. God came for your life. He laid down his life when you weren't looking for him. He died for you on the worst day to get you free from your junk and to bring home with him. And if you're in rebellion to him, you're, not, you're resisting him. He's here today. He laid down his life on that cross and he rose from you. He's calling you. And uh, about a bunch of people stood up, but Sarah was one of the people, about a dozen high schoolers stood up in the room. And when they stood up, half of them started shaking and trembling with the power of elbows on. No one's waving their hands. I wasn't doing the jacket. I might be a product. Um, God just came upon uh, her. When Sarah went out into the power, just where she was, she said, I was surrounded by a white light. I went to a place I didn't know where I was. But it was beautiful. It was perfect. And I heard a voice say to me, Sarah, you deserve better. Mm -hmm. Sarah had been, um, there's kids here, so I won't say all the details, but she had been in an abusive relationship at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, just different types of abuse going on. And uh, she was suicidal. And instantly in that moment, she got saved. She had to live a suicide. Mm -hmm. I was going to do it today. I know Jesus is just as much healer as he is deliverer as he is savior. Yeah. And he's real. Um, my testimony is I actually got... 
delivered and baptized in the Holy Ghost just a few miles that way. I was in college at the University of San Diego. I had met the Lord as a child in a Southern Baptist church. I responded to a call. They said, if you want to give your life to Jesus, come to the front. And I walked to the front. I felt a hand on my shoulder, even though nobody was walking with me. I still remember it very vividly. I was seven years old. I was 14 years old. I just got super offended by stuff I saw in church. And I walked away from church, but God didn't walk away from me. Yeah. Do not allow other people to keep you from Jesus. Yeah. That's called bitterness. It'll yeah. lead you to hell. Literally. And uh, the Lord wants to free people from that today. But at 19 years old, I went to an evangelistic service here in San Diego. I was at college over by the beach. Actually, uh, I didn't realize there was anything over here. I used to live over there in Mission Beach. I was like, we don't go over there. I'm not sure if it's safe. Is that like another country over there? But I'm driving around from your house to come here. I'm like, man, it looks like Colorado. It's just like small. It's beautiful out here. It's incredible out here. It's a whole new side. I had no idea. I was like, we don't go over there. Like, you guys come over there, but you don't yeah, go over here. He's counting. He's counting. Come on. So I was, I was over there at Mission Beach. A friend challenged me. I went to an evangelistic meeting. The evangelist, uh, at the end of the meeting, I went up to the front, and he told me my sins. And I'm not going to do that to you today. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 okay. uh, not for But, uh, you know, the, uh, but he told me my sins, and I said, no, no, no. I was, like, shaking my head. And then he looked at me in my eyes, and he said, you know my daughter just got married? And when she went to the altar, it was the first time she ever kissed a man. And as soon as he said that, my heart got pierced. That somebody would dedicate themselves to God. I just started bawling. He laid hands on me. He said, within five weeks, you'll be a strong part of this church. Guess what? I went home and kept drinking. But my friend challenged me. He said, I dare you to read the Bible for 30 days straight. That was a good day. I'm really glad he dared me. I dare you to read the Bible for 30 days straight. I know you already. But I dare everybody here to read the Bible for 30 days straight. It'll transform your life forever. I'm reading through John's Gospel, and I go into the book of Acts, and I get to Acts chapter 5. There's a story in there about these two people that were hypocrites, Ananias and Sapphira, pretenders. And uh, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Chris, you're just like them. He walked into my apartment and said, Chris, you're just like them. 7-Eleven, San Fernando Place, apartment C. I can walk you there. Mission Beach. Maybe later. Maybe we baptize somebody there or something. He walked in. He said, Chris, you're just like them. You say you're doing what you're doing, but you have. I love you so much, I'll let you keep living the way you're living. Oh, the love of God. Mm. But he's not a controller. Right. Mm. I'll let you keep living the way you're living. Because you know the end of it. I knew in that moment I was not going to have it going out. And Jesus died on the cross, not just for other people, but for me. I wept for two days. I got to lay the devils. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I've never been the same since. The faithfulness of God. You see, Jesus went to the cross not just for other people. He went to the cross for you. God put skin on and allowed that skin to be ripped off. He was pierced through for your transgressions, crushed your iniquities, chastised for your shalom, your peace. He was accused so you'd be unaccusable anymore. Amen. He was, he was accused so that the mental torment could be ripped out of your soul. Oh, that's wonderful. And he's there on that cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He was announcing our Father's will of forgiveness because God is a forgiver. So anytime we have unforgiveness and bitterness in our hearts towards people, we're actually acting like the devil and not like God. Oh, and guess what? That'll pull you. That'll pull you straight to hell. Oh, yeah. God won't control you. Bitterness mm. is bondage. Good, yeah. wow. Jesus died for his abusers to get abuse out of us. Jesus died for those who afflict him to get affliction out of us. He laid down his life there on the cross. He shed his blood. God put on skin and allowed it to be ripped off, spilling his very blood to cleanse us from our sins. Yeah. Much of the church preaches, uh, you know, Jesus forgives our sin. But it's kind of like they preach it like God puts these rose-colored glasses on, so it looks at you like you're holy, but really you're not. You know, when you give your life to Jesus and your old life drowns in the water of baptism, that old life is cut off. There's no remembrance of it anymore. As far as east is from the west, your sins are gone. Yeah. The old life, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you're filled with the very spirit that testifies Jesus is Lord. The very spirit that testifies that he's resurrected from the dead. And the very spirit that confirms that he's alive and well with miracles, signs, and wonders. When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit there in the apartment, you know, I had that little, like, you know, that little prayer language come out of me. That little ha-ha-ha little 
prayer line, your secret, secret, secret. You know, that prayer line is for you in your secret place. But then when you're in a meeting, sometimes you can get a word in tongue and give an interpretation. Oh, it's beautiful. I ended up experiencing the power of God, and uh, we started seeing miracles at the University of San Diego. You know that Catholic place down there? Great place, praise God. I got in trouble for miracles on that campus. I'm commissioned by everyone in this room today to get in trouble with King Jesus for miracles. Uh, I ended up going up to Northern California to the Great Church, Bethel Church. Uh, I was there for seven years. I ended up serving in their healing rooms. Uh, as like an overseer for once a month, they're here to start traveling around the world. I've been all over the place, and I love Jesus a lot, so that's my story. Go with me to uh, Isaiah 61. I'm going to take you there. I'm going to take you to Luke 4. Go to Isaiah 61. I'm going to read the first verse with you, and then we're going to write to Luke 4, verse 18. The God of the universe put skin on and started to talk to people. He started talking to people about God the Father. He goes into a synagogue, which was the place where the Jews would meet to talk about God, to read the scriptures, and he quoted this verse. Isaiah 61, verse 1. Read it with me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Say that again. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Go with me to Luke 4. Take a minute to get there. I'll just prove it to you that Jesus is actually quoting the Bible. <laughs> just in case you didn't believe. Luke 4 18. The scroll was handed to him. He gets up to talk. What does he say? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. What for? <laughs> to preach the gospel to the poor. Let's say that again. To preach the gospel to the poor. The Hebrew word there in the Old Testament means oppressed, downtrodden, and afflicted. It means physically, emotionally, and spiritually poor. Don't worry, I'm not taking off. I'm not taking off. <laughs> We're going to be taking off at some point, but I mean, just, I'm not preaching about giving right now. To preach to those who are downcast. To preach the gospel to the poor. What is the gospel? The gospel is what I've already shared with you. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish in an everlasting life. God didn't send the son of the world to condemn the world. To destroy the world, but that through him we would be saved. He was the son of life, but he was not of the son of not have life. In him, John 1 was life. And his life was the light of the world. But we were in darkness, but he came to be a great light for us, laying down his life on the cross. I want to teach you how to preach the gospel in about 30 seconds to people. Did you know that 94% of Christians, 94 is 96 percent of Christians, have never had the privilege of losing someone in Christ? You want to know why? Because one, we're scared of it. Two, we don't know the gospel. And three, we don't know how much fun it is. <laughs> you have no idea how much fun it is. Um, I was driving, I have a lot of San Diego stories. I was driving down here. The Lord told me to fly out of San Diego on a trip to minister in Washington, D.C., and then to minister in Israel. And I drove down here, and I put the radio on for a second. And while I'm driving the car, and I'm only listening to the radio, this band comes on the radio, and they start singing about drugs, and singing about women, and all this debauchery. I start getting mad. Do you want to know why? Because God hates that stuff because it destroys people's lives. Right. Many of us in this room know what that was like. Some of you don't know what it's like, and you think it's cool. You know, man, I want to be, I want to be cool. I want to be cool if I listen to this or I do this or whatever. Trust me. Listen to the older folk. They know what they're talking about when they say that stuff is lame. Don't walk that way. The devil's trying to pull you into hell. So I'm listening to the radio, and I go, God, you need to do something about this band. You need to touch this band. You need to do something about this band. I'm praying in the car. I'm doing my head because my wife's just sitting there kind of, so I think she's picking my nap. So the next day I got on an airplane. I'm on a different airline than I'm normally on. I'm in a different row than I'm normally in. I offered a couple that are in the row. I said, you guys want the window seat? And they said, really? I said, yeah, you guys have a window seat if you want. Take whatever seat you want. I'll sit wherever you want. If you want me in the middle of you guys, I'll sit in the middle of you. You're having a bad day, whatever you want. I'm just having fun with this couple. So I sit down. We start chatting. We start talking. As we're chatting it up, all of a sudden I start to feel the presence of God. What does that mean you felt the presence of God, Chris? I actually felt like an electricity. It's what I felt in my apartment when I got radically delivered. Like this warm electricity go through my body. That was liquid love. It was adoption. It was God's heart for us. 
It was both joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, kindness, faith, gentle, self control, and love wrapped into one. It was the, it was the Spirit of God. It was, it was beautiful. And um, I felt that presence, and I started to feel that in my left ear, like a buzzing in my left ear. So I turned to the man sitting next to me, this, this couple I've been talking to. I said, hey, you got a problem with your left ear? You feel something like that, you know? There's different ways to hear God's voice. You know, you can hear God's voice with your heart. You can hear God's voice like Fred did. He's like, well, I guess I'm going to give a prophecy to our worship right now. <laughs> And then some people were like, is that allowed? Is he allowed to talk like that? Well, as long as he's anointed, he's allowed to do it, praise God. If he's not anointed, he's going to rebuke him on the surface. And if it's anointed, you rebuke him on the spot. But if it's anointed, you receive it. You go, amen, that was a good word, I received that word. You know, praise God, that edifies. You know, prophecy is gratification. So I felt this burning in my left ear. I said, hey, you got a problem with your left ear to the guy? He goes, I do. How'd you know that? I said, God just told me, and God's going to heal you. He has many ways to hear God. You can hear God audibly. I've heard God with these physical ears. He called me to preach the gospel. In San Diego, Carmel Valley, and Fernandina. Audibly, with these physical ears. Preach the gospel among my children, he said. I heard it from the roof of my head. I started to weep and shake, and I grabbed the guy next to me. Even though I knew I didn't say it, because the accent, oh, the accent of the Almighty is on the roof. I knew it wasn't him, but I heard it physically. So I said, did you say this? With a crazy accent. So I asked the guy on the plane, I said, you have a problem with your left ear? He says, I do, how'd you know that? I said, God told me God's going to heal you. So I prayed for him real quick. I said, can I pray for you real quick? Not going to be, not going to be awkward, not going to be weird. You got to get over with people like those. Yes, we do. That was one of the greatest bondages in my life when I was 19, was the fear of people. God told me, said, Chris, you fear people so much, there's no room for my love in your life. See, he was always loving me, but I wasn't allowing him. I wasn't receiving. Makes sense. He said, fear of man brings a stare. Those who trust the Lord will be safe. They'll be, find refuge. They'll find safety. They'll find shalom. It's beautiful. The fear of man is going to be broken today in Jesus. And I feel like God breaking the fear of man in our lives today. Say amen. 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 So I started doing my prayer for him for five seconds. Let me just say that to you. I said, let me pray for you for five seconds and God's going to do something. See, regardless of where your faith is at, you can say, let me pray for you for five seconds and God's going to do something. He put it all in him. Yeah. Or yeah. Robert said the key to his human ministry was if God didn't show up, he was finished. Yes. Yeah. Say, so I pray. I said, I pray. I don't even know if I touched him. I just said, you don't have to touch people. That's yeah. right. You just stretch your hands for him. Just let me pray for five seconds. In Jesus' name, all pain go. Endometriosis go. Autoimmune problems go. Be healed in Jesus' name. Sickness go. They didn't tell me anything about you guys. There's only, the only thing they said is I called out last night with Frank. I said, God's going to heal endometriosis to me. So there's somebody in the church. So I asked them not to tell any people's names or anything like that. If I, if I ever knew somebody, I'll tell you. Yeah, they told me this, and I'll give you a word. Um, so the guy on the plane, I pray for him. Then I turn to his wife, and I say, I don't know why, but I'm thinking about this van. And this van is called Switchfoot. They're a van from San Diego. So you like, okay. And they have this nonprofit that does work with like skateboarders and surfers, and they try to keep kids off drugs. I don't know why I'm thinking about that nonprofit when I look at you, and I feel like you have a heart to like see kids free from drugs. She, her eyes go open. She goes, "I work for that exact nonprofit for four years." I turn to the guy and I say, "What do you do for work?" He says, "I'm a musician." I said, "Really? You have a band?" He goes, "Yeah." I said, "What's the name of your band?" No, it wasn't special. <laughs> it was the lead singer of the band that was on the radio. But I was complaining about <laughs> Oh God, fix America. Do something about California. Do something about this place. Lord, help us do something, God. Then what does God do? Is you do something about it. Last year, churches around America decided to shut their doors, and then this one decided to open their doors right at the same time. A pastor in Florida said, we're not shutting our doors. If I close our doors, I'll have to quit the ministry, because God told me to preach the gospel, and people are in desperate need. 
and call it to preach the gospel. It doesn't matter if there's a plague, it doesn't matter if there's an infirmity, it doesn't matter if there's a war, I call it to preach the gospel. Because we're in a spiritual war all the time. Right. Praise God, victory is already ours. The joy of the Lord is already our strength. Take your eyes off the devil and put them on the one that makes you right. yeah. Take your eyes off the devil and put your eyes yeah. upon the one, the risen son. And this pastor in Florida said, I'm not closing down, so he gets arrested. After he gets arrested, the governor of Florida says, the state of Florida has no authority to close churches down. Let that man out of prison. Oh, the governor of, of uh, Texas hears the same thing. Here's his pastor who's arrested. He makes a public announcement. The state of Texas has no authority to close churches, according to the United States Constitution. Yep. All the churches in Texas open up. A guy decides to go across a bridge in Northern California. I was living up there in Santa Cruz at the time. Goes across the bridge with a guitar. Says, this is enough. This is wrong. You see, wherever people stand yeah. against <laughs> The onslaught of the enemy, where the believer stands, yes. the enemy always fails. Yes. I decree that every plan of Satan against your life fails today, Jesus. Yes. I decree that every weapon formed yes. against you is destroyed. Yes. That every tongue that rose against you is cast down, Jesus. Yes. 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 Glory yes. to God. Yes. You know, I got filled with the joy of the war um, there in. Mission Beach, I was laughing. All the weight came off of me. This was, uh, when was it? What's today? November 13th? 14th. November 14th. It was November 7th, 2004. Mm -hmm. How many years was that? What's it, 2021 right now? 17 years. Glory to God. <laughs> 17 years. Oh, Jesus is worthy. You guys, if you want to be in, like, you know, preaching, you know, going around mission ministry, God is recruiting all. Oh, he's recruiting. He's recruiting. My goodness. I got filled with the joy of the Lord because all the sin came out, and so something had to come in. Like, oh, God, sin killed me. And I started laughing hysterically in my heart. I went from tears for two days. I would leave my apartment sick to my stomach, trying to get away from it. And I would, have, I would get sick to my stomach, go back in, start bawling again. I, I kind of filled with the joy of the Lord. I went to church, and they're like, oh, you know, eventually the honeymoon's going to wear off for us. It hasn't worn off. <laughs> Jesus is alive. Yes. He's the healer, the savior, the deliverer, and the baptizer, and the Holy Ghost. And if you need a fresh baptism, he's here today. He's going to dip me in that water. Yes. You know, when you get baptized in water back in Israel, they had to actually, I just found this out the other day. I think yesterday, they, were you have, they would baptize people in running water. Because yeah. you know? your whole life would be washed away. Yeah. Yeah. But see, when you get baptized in the spirit, it says of Jesus, John the Baptist said, I baptize in water. A baptism of repentance. They come out, they confess their sins, they, they get revived. I baptize, baptize them with repentance. But he who comes after me, I don't get to tie his shoes. I'm not even worthy to do that. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. When you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you get baptized in the river of love, yeah. in a river of joy. You know, a lot of people, they go to church, they feel something. They feel a little tingle, a little goosebump. They're like, wow, I felt something. And then they go back to their old life because they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. But see, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, out of your innermost being will flow a river of a river, a river, a rivers. Rivers of what? Rivers of healing. Rivers of prophecy. Rivers of joy. Rivers of freedom. Rivers of tongues and adoration. Rivers of songs. Yes. River yes. of freedom. Yes. You walk around as a living revival. Let's read a little more of that Luke 4. Is that okay? You guys all right? I'm a preacher, so I was told. Well, you didn't actually tell me how long I had to go, so I guess I could just go till 2 a.m. You know? Yeah, 2 a.m. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. I want to practice preaching the gospel real quick. I want you to turn to somebody next to you, and I'm going to have you preach the gospel to me in 12 seconds. Have you heard the good news? Go and say now pretend. You know what I've been watching CNN every day. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Been watching Fox News too. I haven't heard anything. Why don't you tell me, say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He went to a bloody cross for you. Died for you. And he rose from the dead. Have you heard this before? Have you heard this before? I just told you how to preach the gospel in 12 seconds. Everybody's always wondering, like, how do I start a conversation with people? Like, I don't know how to, like, step into it. Like, you know kindness will not save anyone? That's right. 
Well, you know, Chris, I, I preach the gospel and sometimes I use words, you know? You know that that's a quote of a fool? That's not a quote of Satan. Jesus, <laughs> is it? That's a quote of a sissy. <laughs> There's no record of it in St. Francis' writings of that ever being said. None of his disciples ever said it because it doesn't line up with Scripture. In Romans 10, it says, how will people hear unless they're preached to? And how will people preach unless they're sent? I'm sending you today by the Lord. Come on. God's sending you by his presence. Yes. You guys, I want you to grab people tonight, and I want you to tell them, hey, there's a, a special speaker going to be at our church tonight. Yeah. And um, he actually, like, you know, knows the thoughts of people and knows things about their lives nobody can know. There's going to be really, like, radical supernatural things. And you guys have them come, and when they come, I'm going to introduce them to the special speaker. His name's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Yeah. When you grab five yeah. people, yeah. Yeah. text yeah. 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 I love you. Yeah. Yeah, the Lord's quickening me to do this right now. Um, I want to pray for people, like your family, people you know, friends. And I want you to send them a text in the service right now, just a moment. Go to the Lord quickly to see and just tell them, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hey, I'm praying for you. Talk about you. That's all I want you to say. All right? Even if, it, if you think of someone that feels scary, just send it to them anyway. If they blow up in bitterness, it's awesome. You get the, you get the forgiven later. It's great. Let's just pray for a moment. Father, we just thank you for drawing the lost in this church. I know there's a couple already here, but God, I thank you Lord, for drawing them in honor, Jesus. God, I thank you that this church will be known for multiplication of salvation, deliverance, and healing. The gospel will run forth through every mouth and every hand. In Jesus' name. I did this in uh, Colorado Springs recently, and somebody texted the person more quick and done, and they wrote right back, and they said, we just found a family member dead in the home. Right then, they get a text saying, God's with you and God's for you. Why does that happen? You'd be amazed, guys. Just get your phone out, shoot some of the texts, give you 30 seconds. Even if you're like, a, you know, an older person or a young person in rebellion, just go ahead and get your phone out and just go for it anyway. God will do something supernatural. Amen. Send angels to go grab people. I'll give you like 30 seconds to do that. I bet you've never done this in church before, Pastor. So get your phone out. You guys are always doing it when the pastor doesn't want you to. Now the pastor wants you to. The gospel is the good news. It's that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. It's that he is the king of the kingdom that is in the earth now and his will is going forth. Not everything that happens is God's will. You being in rebellion, that's not God's will. You being in sin, that's not God's will. If God's will were to happen everywhere on earth as it is in heaven, God would have to kill all the people that are in rebellion to him. But God's not a murderer. He's not a thief. He's not a robber. The devil is a murderer and a thief right. and a robber from the beginning, and he came to bring life and life more abundantly. So he doesn't control people. Well, Chris, God's in control. No, God's not in control. If God were in control, you wouldn't be saying that right now. <laughs> You wouldn't be living that way right now. You wouldn't be dealing with that issue that you're dealing with right now. You would have gotten rid of your subscription to issues in the cross of Christ. Yep. Jesus wow. came to deal, deal with that subscription. Deal with that pattern, that curse, whatever it is. He's breaking curses today, Jesus. Every pattern is broken of sin in Jesus' name. He came to bring the gospel to the poor. He sent me to what? Heal. Come on. If it was God's will for people to be sick, then why would Jesus heal people? Yeah, that's right. If it was God's will for people to be sick, then why would Jesus send his followers out, you and me, to heal people? You don't have to be a pastor to heal the sick. You just get to be a follower. Jesus himself said, these signs shall follow those who believe. Is that what the first one was? They shall cast out devils. Who delivered some anointing on this guy? Man, I see it all over this He liked that word when I said it. Deliverance anointing on and you see so many people set free of drugs, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow your mind. Well, I see cigarettes being thrown out of the I see pipes being thrown out of the In Jesus' name. I see the Lord deliver people with drugs around now. Because there's this new transit system. I've been driving around on the freeways here. It's called Cannabus. It's like this signs <laughs> everywhere around. It's like, is, is it a new transit? It's like you go like a bus station. Is it? Do you know what I'm talking about, bro? Have you seen those big signs? It says Canon Bus. I've never seen those. It's like an arrow. There is a Canon Bus. 
you know, we would we would preach the gospel last year when all the churches were closed. We'd go in front of Planned Parenthood in Santa Cruz and in front of the New Age bookstore. And I'd get up and I'd just say, hey, everybody, I have good news for you. Jesus Christ is alive. He's risen from the dead. God so loved the world that he came to forgive your sins. He put skin on and died for you and rose from the dead. And he's coming again. He's going to judge the living and the dead. And will you be on his team or will you be on the enemy's team? God loves you so much that he died for you and rose from the dead. Yes. So he preached like that. And, um, a, a guy was across the street, and he, he started yelling at us while I was preaching one day. And he goes, be quiet. He sounded like the bad guy on the old Spider-Man 3 with Tobey Maguire. Or Spider -Man, all those Spider -Man movies. You know the ones that, like, you guys probably like the new ones, right? Like the old ones. When I was a kid, they had the same. You don't like anything, do you? No. You're sick of your, you, you like the older ones or better? <laughs> you like the Tobey Maguire? Come on. All right. Give me a high five. That's, that's, that's good news. What's your name again, bro? Bo. Oh, good name. Like my uh, brother-in-law's name was Bowen. Good name, Bob. You had a great name. Great name. Anyway, Spider-Man, uh, this, this is across the street, the bad guy from Spider-Man starts screaming. He goes, be quiet, I can hear you. And I'm like, well, come join us. I said, hey, come on over here. He gets up in our face, and he goes, this is better. Only do this amongst yourselves. And I go, oh, it's a devil. <laughs> you know, sometimes you bring church to devils, and sometimes devils come to church. I was at a church at Omaha one time preaching at a meeting, a Bible meeting, and I said, if the church would simply preach the gospel, whole cities would be saved. A guy in the back row stands to his feet, young guy, stood to his feet, deep guttural voice, shut up, shut up, shut up. And I'm like, oh, it's a devil. And I was like, Holy Ghost, what do we do? Sometimes you ask him what to do. And he goes, tell it to be quiet. And I'm like, Silence in Jesus' name. The guy just goes, boom, just fell over. And then I go, well, I guess that was a good point. Preach the gospel and whole cities would get saved. So why aren't cities saved? Because the church is not preaching the gospel. I'm teaching you how to do it. I'm teaching you how to do it. Don't, don't look at other people. Look at yourself. Say, I'm going to do this. I want to challenge everybody in this room. Yeah, today, to go up to somebody and just say, have you heard the good news? And just launch into that. The, the worst thing that can happen is somebody say, okay. Oh, it's the absolute worst thing that could happen. <laughs> they can't hurt you physically. They can't beat you up. Did you know that? Did you know that devils can't beat you up? Yes. Oh, I had it just a, this was a few weeks ago in Orange County. This demon was in this kid at the end of the service. He's, he's screaming, F you. Like, just, just full on, full ball manifestation. I said, I said, who are you in Jesus' name? What's the name of the room? And it goes, Satan. And I'm, I started laughing. I'm like, I think, I think Satan's got better stuff to do than hang out with you, kid. Um, <laughs> he's, got, he's got, like, patience to try to mess with him. You know, you're, you're, you're 25 and don't have a job. But, you know, I think, I think Satan's got a better job. <laughs> so I started laughing. And I, I go, come out in Jesus' name, Satan. You know, like, why do I even yell now? Devil's come to church. <laughs> So I was in Santa Cruz, I'll finish the story. I was in Santa Cruz, and I'm preaching, this guy comes up. As the gospel was going forth, there was a kid on the street who had been living in alcoholism. His name's Mitchell. And uh, one of our team grabbed him and talked to him. They brought me over. I said, Mitchell, are you done with yourself? Are you done with yourself? Are you done? He goes, I am. I'm done. I said, do you want to give everything up to that? Do you want to just turn from everything you heard from Jesus? Because he'd already heard the gospel being preached. He said, I do. We took him right to the beach because he could almost walk there. I think he did walk there from downtown Santa Cruz. You met there? Yeah, yeah, she lives there. Yeah. Yeah, she lives. No way. She's she's no way. No problem. Yeah. Praise God. What's your name? Irma. Irma. Good to meet you. Give me five. Bless you, Irma. That's cool. I like that. So we took him to the beach. We baptized him on the spot. He confessed his sins in the water. Confessed. To, I wasn't in the water with him. He confessed to gnarly stuff. You know? The people carry around all kinds of stuff for years. Just this cycle in their life. Confessed all this stuff, went under the water, came up stumbling, drunk in spirit, gets filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with new tongues. A week later, is with us in Half Moon Bay, open air preaching to a bunch of Satanists on skate ramp. Uh, open air preaching. We'd go out to the farmer's market. You want, you want to meet some devils, go to some of these farmer's markets. These days, you know? It's like a Harry Potter store, you know? It's just like, you got your wands, you got your stuff. 
my buddy Joe was over here preaching in the Santa Cruz Farmer's Market, and a woman starts weeping, and a, and a demon eye guy starts running towards him to like try to stop him, and as he's running towards him, the demon eye guy, his head gets caught like in a bag, and his head, he's just like, oh, like, he's going like this. It was the most funny thing, and then guess what happened? Right after he finishes, the Holy Ghost drops on me and says, now it's your turn. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I've been to this farmer's market. I start preaching. Guys, said, we don't want to hear about Jesus. And I said, why would you want to hear about love? And I kept going. You know, it was awesome. Oh, the demonized guy up north. Why? I was sharing the story for a reason. Because devils can't touch you. This guy's cursed and saying, F you. And he would try to swing at me. And his hand would come right to here and barely touch my shirt and stuff. Sometimes Christians and Christians are so afraid of the devil. Right. The devil can't touch you in Jesus' name. Every plan of the devil is broken today in Jesus' name. Open air preaching. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim deliverance to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Liberty to captives, deliverance to captives. You're captive because of what someone else did. You're trafficked. But in Christ, you bury your old life, you get delivered. But see, a lot of people don't live delivered because they don't realize that Jesus is delivered. The same way that people don't live healed because they don't realize that Jesus is a healer. First time I got healed, I went to a meeting. Um, I think it was the first time. No, first time I got healed was lactose intolerance. I just I just said, I'm done drinking soy milk. This stuff is horrible. <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, you're getting healed today. You can be today. Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Take it right now in Jesus' name. Receive the anointing. It's all in Belly in Jesus' name. We'll get you the rest of it later. <laughs> I go up to Reading to go to Bible school or supernatural ministry school. I get hay fever for six weeks. So bad, I think I'm going to have to leave Reading. Like, I'm just sneezing nonstop. I won't describe what my face looked like. I'm just literally blowing my nose all day long. I can't even sleep. Just sneezing, sneezing. I go to church. Pastor says, stand up. Anyone sick, stand up. I just stood on my feet before they prayed for me. I felt this warmth go through my body. All symptoms left. I've never had anything like that ever since. Praise God. Amen. I mean, you don't realize that people walk around with stuff that we get to destroy in Jesus' name. Amen. God heals because he loves. God heals because he can. And God heals because he wants to. In Matthew 8, uh, a leper comes to Jesus and says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me whole. What does Jesus say? I'm willing. I am willing. The Greek word there, thelo, means I want to, I like to, I plan to, I purpose to, I love to. Yeah. It gives me a lot of joy to do it. Yeah. It gives God joy. You want God to get glory? Get healed. Amen. Right. <laughs> well, but God, God, I think God gave me this to like, you know, teach me a lesson. I'm like, would you do that for your kids? Would you do that to your kids, you know? Give them a jab to, like, make them a better person. To, you know, out of the fear of other people. Would you do that to your kids? No condemnation on anybody here. It's all right. But if you've got a jab or other people have or whatever, we'll pray for you. We'll be fine. No condemnation. Don't get upset with me. Don't get upset with me. Half the room will be happy and the other half. I'll go after the conservative people in a second. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. <laughs> liberty captives recovery sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed oppression uh, bondage, prison is because of things we did Jesus came to bring us out of both isn't that beautiful yes. yeah. Jesus said today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing because Jesus is the fulfillment of the word yeah. and he's alive he went to the cross uh one or two more verses go with me, Acts chapter 10. Man, I was going to preach a totally different message this morning. <laughs> Maybe we should have three services. <laughs> Man, I really was. I was going to preach on the anointing. I don't even know how much time I have. I'm just like, let's pray for people here in a second. I'm trying to figure out. Like, Acts chapter 10. I was going to preach 1 Corinthians 12, talk about the manifestations of the Spirit, being like a flowing river, tongues and prophecy and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. The Lord's going to do that. I don't know. <laughs> 23 minutes? What do you mean? 
Oh, that's how long I'm on. I think I have all day. I was one of those. I'll let people know if they have to go. I start again. Yeah. Um, I, might, I might keep going. I might just keep going. So we'll see. I don't know. He didn't, he didn't actually tell me. So I didn't get that. Yeah, I don't ask. I don't ask for it. Maybe the bathroom would be free to go. Um, Acts chapter 10. Peter was summoned to preach the gospel to a bunch of people. He was summoned because he was prepared. Because he knew the gospel. He knew the author. Angel actually came to a guy and summoned to go get Peter to come. He shows up. He says, I perceive that God's no respecter of persons. For every nation, anyone that serves him, in verse 34. Anyone that serves him is accepted by him. And in verse 38, I'll skip a few verses down. I, I just wanted to hit the God's no respecter of persons. Because if God's done it for somebody else, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Sarah and he healed her simply through a word, it would heal you simply through a word. Right. He sends his word and he heals you today. If he healed and delivered Sarah from all oppression earlier, the girl I shared about, he's delivering you today. If Sarah got saved, he's saving you today. If Sarah got baptized in the Holy Ghost, you get, you get baptism too in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. God is no yeah. respecter of persons. What he's done for someone else, you should memorize that verse. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. God's no respecter of persons. Yeah. My, my ministry, our ministry, is God's ministry, but I serve it. But we had, we had more blessing come in last year than I ever have. I, we gave away more money last year to other ministries than I've made many years of my life. And my job is to preach in churches, and all the churches were closed. So I just took the gospel to the streets, you know? And God moved, and, and miracles happened. You know, I can't even, you know, some of us, we are so worried about stuff that God's not worried about. You know, I didn't even have a way to get down here. I couldn't get a one-way rental from Palm Springs yesterday. I was in Palm Springs with pastors and church. And uh, I couldn't get a one-way rental to get here because all the people came to Palm Springs because the whole, you know, Midwest was cold, so they all flew down there. I couldn't get a one-way rental. I'm like, you know what? It's going to be fine. And then you have all these thoughts of like, what are you going to do? How are you going to get there? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So I'm like, you know what? I'll get an Uber. You know, you get an Uber for a three-hour car ride to San Diego Airport. Yeah, you know, Uber ride's going to be pretty. You know what happens? I don't ask, I don't tell anybody anything. A guy walks up to me and after I talk to him, we pray together. He walks up and he says, I, Chris, Chris, this is for you. He gave me the entire Uber fare. The cash was the amount that I needed to pay wow. about. I get in the car. This is crazy. I don't even know if this is like allowed with Uber. I get into the car and I say, hey, man, the Uber's like this much, but I, I have this much in cash. If you just rather have that, he's like, I'd way rather have that. Uber's going to get a big percentage of this drive. And I was like, I was like, all right, we'll take this. He goes, whoa. He told me he actually owed a guy in San Diego that amount of cash because he was renting the car from the guy for cash. Wow. You know, God supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And God's no respecter of persons. Quit worrying about money. If you are worried about money or worried about food shortages or supply, you know, Elijah wasn't worried about food shortages. Food shortages were worried about him. Yeah. Elijah comes along, ravens, deliver food to his house, where he's at, hanging out by a river twice a day, meat and, like, meat twice a day, like, like meat, you know, like, in and out burger to your house twice a day. You know, every grocery store in America could shut down. God will cause birds to fly in and out burger to your house, in and out burger's not even open. <laughs> Well, well, Chris, have you heard of the food short? Haven't you heard the Biden administration? I don't live in the Biden administration. I live in the God administration. Yeah. Yeah. I may live in America, but I don't have American Jesus, problems. Come on. I solve American problems with the power of God and the word of Jesus Christ. Amen. We solve problems. We don't have problems. Right. I'm not trying to bum on you if you came in with sickness or how you need a miracle today. Like, God's here is the miracle worker. He wants to give you. He wants to provide for you. He wants to give supernatural. Like, I'm going to receive an offering later, but I don't need your money. I don't need a dime of it. If every single person stopped giving to our ministry, our ministry would keep doing the same thing. Why? Because God would have ravens deliver whatever we need. He'd have a raven deliver Bitcoin right to my house. They would bring the cell phone with the Coinbase wallet right to my house with the Bitcoin. Some of you guys are like, what's a Bitcoin? It would deliver right to my house. It would have the code and everything in there. You ready to go? I'm not in need. I don't have needs. I solve needs in Jesus. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, I solve needs. In Jesus. God's no respecter of persons. That's a good, this is good stuff, isn't it? Yes. A new car. God will do it. 
Don't do it. I gave away a car in San Diego once. I'm not saying this for you to give away a car. Give, 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 God tells you to give a car, give a car. I don't know what I'm well, doing. Given two cars. Yeah, you make two. I gave away a car to a missionary. Someone came to me and said, Chris, they didn't know I needed a car. I said, Chris, I want to get you a car. I need you whatever you want. They bought me my, like the car that I wanted. Wow. Brand new. Brand new. Okay. I traded an old seller for that way and four I'm not, That's a good deal, isn't it? It's a good deal. See, God doesn't tell you to give to take from you. God doesn't tell you to tithe to take from you. Oh, he's going there. He's going there. He's talking about that. Yeah, I'm talking about that because that doesn't benefit me at all. That benefits you because tithes don't go to Christ. They go to this local church. The tenth is belongs to the Lord. It's the first 10% of everything that comes into your house. Why do you give it to him? So then your bank account becomes his bank account. Well, my money belongs to God already. No, it doesn't. He tithes. Say it again, the Holy Ghost tells me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, tithing's part of the law because actually Abraham tithed before the law ever began. That's right. And when he won a war, Abraham fought a war, they were going to give him spoils. He says, I don't want any of this stuff, lest you say you made me rich. And then God appeared to him and said, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward, or your reward shall be great. Yeah, God wants you rich. Why? Because you can destroy hell. Our ministry feeds 100 kids every single day. We upped it recently. You know, the day I decided to up it was the day that our ministry had the largest offering they ever received. I never mentioned a word about upping it. God supplies every need. You can get in the need meeting business and not the need meeting business. All right, Acts 10 38. What does what Peter say? And you know of Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed, say anointed, anointed. with the Holy Ghost. And power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Does all mean some? Does all mean a few? Does all mean those that have all their ducks in a row? Does all mean just those that have enough faith to be healed? Yeah, Jesus healed everyone that came to him. Did you come to Jesus today? Amen. Well, we just thank you that you're here. You are alive. Your anointing is here. Oh, Lord, I want to preach five sermons. I feel so much anointing. But God, I thank you that your anointing is your presence and your power unto your purposes on earth as it is in heaven. God, in heaven, there's no sickness and disease. God, I thank you that people do not even have to wait to be healed. The power of God is already moving through this place. Miracles have actually been happening even during the message. I forgot to tell you at the beginning, but it's already been happening. Yes. Power God's moving right here. People are feeling warmth on your body. You're feeling tingling on your body. Others of you, you don't realize you've gotten a miracle, but you find out as soon as you check. I get paid by direct deposit. I don't feel the deposit, but as soon as I look on my phone, I'm like, oh, look what just happened a few minutes ago. Praise the Lord. Some of you don't find out until you check. How do you know if you have a miracle? You check. Um, yeah, the Lord's quickening me on this one right now. I've been in a number of meetings where every single person with neck issues was instantly healed. Um, many a time I've seen this happen. God's going to do it again. If you're in this room and you have any form of a neck problem, maybe it's a vertebrae issue, maybe it's a you can't turn your head without pain, maybe you were in a car accident, uh, you have neck vertebrae issues, I want you quickly to raise your hand for me. Just raise your hand. All right. You know what? That's all the faith you need to be healed. Mm -hmm. The Lord says he sent his word. God spoke. A word of knowledge is supernatural information about what I couldn't know. God told me, go out and go out the next on healing the next. Now, he doesn't love the people with hip problems more than the neck problem. But he'll heal all the neck problems to get people their eyes off of their problem and rejoice in what God's doing for another. Because we're members of one another. So as people are being healed today, I want you guys to all celebrate their miracles, just like it's yours, because they're your family, whether you realize yeah. they're not. All those people raise your hand, just stand quickly. Amen. Or if you wanted, you know, or if you, you were like, well, I'm scared to, but I'll stay down below this time. Mm -hmm. If you're receiving healing, I don't need you to do anything right now. You can just relax, mm -hmm. pretend like you're having, um, I don't know, a milkshake in the beach in Hawaii. <laughs> a virgin tea and cloth. <laughs> virgin one. Pretend like you're having some, uh, something nice and yummy. Just relax for a minute.
If you're around these guys, I'm drafting you onto Jesus' miracle team today. Look at your hands if you're around them. Look at your hands and say, these things are loaded. The Bible says they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall live. Why don't you stretch your hands towards those that are standing? You don't have to touch them just yet. Just, just stretch your hand towards them. You don't need to touch them right now. Just stretch your hands. Um, say in Jesus' name. Next or hold. Child will go. Infirmity go. Devil get out. Go in Jesus' name. Be made whole. Many of you saw the power of God just went through your body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to take the next 30 seconds of your standing and do what you couldn't do before. Move your neck around. Test your neck out. Take 20, 30 seconds and just do that. If you felt heat in there, or the pain's gone, or the limited mobility's gone, I want you to begin to wave your hands over your head and give glory to God. Look at this. Whoa, look at this. Whoa, look at this. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Wave them really high. Wave them really high. No, wave them really high. It's already gone. Wave them really high. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That's incredible. Stay standing for a minute. You've had neck issues for a while? Yes. How long? <laughs> like since uh, February. I've had a lot of twice. No, yeah, it's my neck and my a bunch of other areas. You had neck issues for months. I don't even know. It's November, right? I preach so much, I don't even know what months it is. Yes. November. Nine months. nine months of neck issues. If you were healed of nine months of neck issues, how happy would you be? What did you feel? I just, I was really focused on praying. It's all right. But you're moving right now. There's no pain? No. Are you I, serious? Yeah, Come on. I can't even look at me. Jesus. <laughs> that doesn't hurt. Hallelujah. No, I have to, like, in my car, I'm, like, trying to look over the shoulder. I can't do it. Can we give Jesus a shout? That's a miracle. Jesus!
I'll take it in Jesus' name. I want to, I want take it. it. Take it in Jesus' name right now. <laughs> yes, Lord. Receive your miracle. Yes, Receive your miracle. You know, I was in a meeting one time in Mexico City. I was all over here. I think that was everybody. Is there anybody that didn't get it yet? You got it? Yeah, sit down. That's. I think it, it seems like everybody just got healed. You say you'll have to check later. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, if God can heal every neck, he can heal everything. Come on. Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. Yes, Lord, we give you. Thank you. 
That heart with me is healed. That spirit of fear that's afflicted your lungs, daughter of God, you're healed. The, the adenoids and the thyroid on the left side, Jesus just healed you as well. Uh, a concussion in the back of the head, the Lord Jesus just healed you. I'll teach on this stuff tonight. You should bring everybody you know because we'll, get, we'll teach. We'll have you guys doing all this stuff. The back of the head, the back of the head healed. Eyes being healed. I know that guy asked for it, but God says that in Jesus' name, be made whole of your eye problems. The, the right leg on the outside, the right leg was just healed. Begin to move your ankle. The Lord Jesus done a creative miracle on the ankle. I don't know if there's metal in there, restricted mobility from something, but the Lord Jesus done a miracle. I keep feeling that pain, that pain in the chest. I rebuke the spirit of fear and death that command to get out of Jesus' mind. I rebuke it out of your mother-in-law in Jesus' name. Jesus healed the mother-in-law. That mother-in-law gets healed who's not even in the meeting right now. Just send her a text. She's healed in Jesus' name. That right elbow, you couldn't fully extend your right arm. The Lord Jesus touched it. The Lord Jesus touched his vertebrae in the back. The, the right hip above the right hip on the right side. The Lord Jesus down here can begin to move your leg around. The power of God is in this place. Jesus. Your name runs in the room together. She's with Kids Church. When he went to get her, she said, I can't leave. There's a legal report. I can't leave, Dad. She was instantly healed. Her cycle started. The Lord does house calls. He reaches out. Oh, King Jesus.
Maybe you're here today and you've never spoke with other tongues today. It's going to be your day. So we're going to pray for you. So I want to give a call first. If you're in this room and either you've not been born again or you're not serving him, you need to give him your life today. I'm going to count to three and I want you to raise your hand boldly. One, quit caring what people think. Two, it's not about the people to your left, to your right. God's speaking to you right now. He died for you on the cross and rose from the dead. Will you come and follow love or will you live your selfish life? Three, raise your hand if you're here and you want to surrender your life to Jesus. Do run it quickly, boldly. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Anyone else? Raise your hand quickly, boldly. Some of these people are Christians, but they were raising their hand because they said, I'm done with me. Raise your hand if you're in this room. Is there anyone else in this section? You say, I gotta give my life to Jesus right now. Raise your hand, bold and quit caring what people think. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Anyone else in this section? You say, I gotta give my life to Jesus. I'm done with me. Thank you. Look at these hands. Look at these hands. Look at these hands. The Lord told me to have you come forward. If you're on the near knees, you can stay there, but just come forward if you can. I'll come to this with my brother here who's hanging. But just come forward. How are God's gonna touch you? Guys? If you raise your hand, just kind of come, come up forward, come over here. Just get out of your seat as an act of obedience. There he is. Thank you, Lord. King Jesus, you're the name we're lifting high, your glory. If you're walking by in the mall and you're bound by sin, you're bound by iniquity, you're hurting inside, you're depressed. Jesus Christ has deliverance and freedom for you. Went to a cross for you. Quit caring what people think. Join God's family. Come. Jesus Christ died for you and he rose from the dead. Come, come, come. Come to the altar now. Come to the altar. You're the name we're lifting high. You're glory. Shaking out the fear of the sky.
And there's more people who are supposed to be up here. You don't. You cannot live free from sin without the baptism of the Spirit. Jesus went to the cross and rose from the dead to get you filled with the love of God. Yes. But you're rejecting it. You need to come. I can point you out in the room. I'm not looking to embarrass you, but you need to quit resisting, quit being selfish, quit being prideful, quit being in rebellion to family, your parents, your friends, whatever. Just respond. I don't care how old you are. You can be 60. Just come. Just come. You've never spoken to them. Just come. We're going to get this. Or it was being really forceful. I'm like, we don't have a lot of time, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're such a sweetheart. What's your name, honey? Jesus is the baptizer. But it says that they laid hands on him and the people were filled with all the Spirit. Can I speak in other tongues? If you're up here for the baptism of the Spirit, just put your hand up. All right. If you're supposed to be up here, put your hand up and come. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, you died for me. You rose from the dead. You are the baptizer. Yes. Lord Jesus, baptize me now. Yes. In the Holy Spirit. I renounce all false teaching I heard about the Holy Spirit. I get to speak in tongues now today. And I will in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it right there. There you go. You're right. I just speak in the little tongues. It's coming out of your mouth. You're going to go louder. Louder. Yeah, just go louder. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Tumor 
disappears right now in Jesus' mighty name. Be gone. Be gone right now. Gone in Jesus' name. Out of the breast. I was thinking about a woman that had breast and uh, had cervical cancer healed in Mexico City years ago. Because we sent a hat to her in the hospital and she was healed. Not a Christian, her and her whole family that's saved. The anointing, the power of God's transferable. You're going to go out of here with the power of God. But right now, miracles are happening. I want everyone in this room, I'm going to let them keep praying. It's perfect what they're doing. Everyone in this room, check your body for sickness or disease right now. If you felt heat in your body in the area of pain, or the pain's gone, or the pain of power, loosen right now. Oh, that's an annoying. Oh, that's an annoying. She put a demand on the annoying. She did put a demand on the annoying. Pick her up and get power cuts all over her. Oh, the guest preacher pushed that lady over. Fill the Jesus name. Power right now. Fill it right now. Fill it. Go there, go now. Oh, I didn't push her over that time. Man, the guest preacher's throwing ladies to the ground. Yeah, God heals you that cancer. Jesus name, out of the blood. Out of the blood. Out of the blood. I don't know anything about you, but it's coming out of your blood. Yes, sir. The river of God is going through you, the heart, the Jesus. liver. The liver and the mind, you will have a perfect mind. You will live to a right, like Caleb saying, I want the hill country at 90. I want the hill country. Give me the lost, give me the children. Youth centers opening up for the gospel to be preached. You're going to preach to thousands of young people about the glory of God. Signs and wonders are going to happen. You're going to get coated with gold. You're going to get coated with oil. Signs and wonders. God anoints you as a sign and a wonder. To young people, you're going to hug lesbians, you're going to hug homosexuals, you're going to see them deliver to devils in Jesus' name. You know, if you're in this room and you have same-sex same attraction, the Lord's delivering you today. That's not her, I'm speaking to other people in the room. If that's you, just put your hand up where you are. Eyes are closed, we're not looking around the room. God wants to deliver you. You're going to Just put it up a little bit, just react a little bit. The grace of God, I deliver you now of that same sex attraction. I'm talking about her. She was set free from all kinds of Come stuff. On. She's on fire. Come on. But right now, God's delivering others of same sex attraction. Come on. Oh, you're not supposed to talk about that kind of stuff. Are you being political? No, the Bible talks about it. The devil wants to destroy your life. You guys can kind of go wherever you're saying. You guys can kind of go back towards your chairs a little bit. If you're on the ground, let's talk. If you're on the ground, stay there. Lord God's name. Hey, hey girls, real quick. Wasn't that cool? See me, you're starting to cry. You're going to cry. Why are you crying? Hardest. I spend money to bring the gospel to people. 
Why? Because God spent everything to bring the gospel to me and to our generation. Look at the giving of God. The Bible says in Luke 6, Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shake it again. You know, um, this is not manipulation. People, they get all weird and start talking about money, but it's because they're in bondage to it. Yeah. When you get free of it, you get excited about this stuff. It's like, oh, wow. Okay, the Lord quickened me one time. You, you give what the Lord leads you to give. I'm just telling you my story. The Lord quickened me one time to give $1,000 to my friends that are missionaries in Thailand. You know what I did? Nothing. Nothing. I didn't do a thing. Every time the money would come into my account, into our business account, the ministry, God would quit me and give thousand dollars. And I wouldn't do it. A year went by, and I was in rebellion. Here I am, like all kinds of miracles, great things happen, but in that area of my life, I was in rebellion. Because God doesn't ask you to give to take from you. Never. You gave him your life, he gave you a lot more than what you gave away. He gave you all of his love, all of his compassion, all of his heart, all of his voice all of his mind, all of his wisdom. And my business is winning souls, so is yours, so is God's. So you know what we did? I said, God, if you give me the money, I'll give it. A year later, a missionary in Colombia reached out to him and says, Chris, I have to give you money, I have to get it to you today. What did he send me? $1,000. I said, this isn't mine, this is seed. Everything you have is either seed to sow or bread for food. Bread you eat, but seed you sow. That's 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9. In chapter 8 says, Jesus became poor, then you become rich. I'm not into that prosperity gospel. Well, then you're not into feeding the, feeding the poor. Do you know Reinhard Bonnke has led 79 million people to Christ before he went on to heaven? Do you know who his biggest supporter was? Kenneth Copeland gave him $79 million over the course of his ministry. And so prosperity buys. Can I rebuke you publicly for being on the phone? Is that okay? You're, you're older than me, so it's okay. <laughs> I have to do it nicely, but it's like... <laughs> for calling me to give. No, no, if you want to get out of here, you can just hang out with this whole couple about stay. Just stay here drunk in Jesus' name. Receive the anointing. Just receive the anointing. You're, you're helping right now. You're serving other people by being drunk. God's healed you. He's touched you. He's all over you. Just relax. Right? God loves and touch you. He'll give her. He loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. He doesn't want sad givers. He wants cheerful givers. You can see she's like, I want some too. I need a a cheerful giver. If you want some joy, you can sit down there too. You're free, the free, this is free to go and anointing right now. The power of God's moving through here. This is awesome. I sent the thousand dollars immediately to Thailand, right? I get up to preach a meeting that weekend, guess what happened? I didn't say anything about that number. Three people come up with a check for what? Why? See, God was trying to give me more than I was trying to give. You want to get in the flow of God? Well, many of you have believed you tired of believing it. If you don't believe in it, just read the word of God for it. Just do what it says. He'll do, he'll do incredible things. <laughs> My car was always breaking down. I'm always having these issues. Your car will stop breaking down. You'll stop having weird stuff happen. I notice I can ask people. I can tell if people tired based on like what happens in their life. And it's not God doing things to them. It's that they haven't left the system of the world financially. Yeah. Offerings are different. This is what you're giving into right now. If you give to the local church, you give your tithe and offering there. But if you give to this this right now, you're giving all If God tells you to give something sacrificial, it's because he's going to do something very supernatural. Very supernatural. So when you give, you're participating in feeding 100 kids a day. You're participating in revival in California, revival in America. That's what you're sowing into. When you sow, I want you to do this. I want you to say, God, I want you to put a demand on it. Because when you preach to people, when I pray for healing, I expect them to get healed. The seed of God of healing, his name, his person, Jesus, is being sown into their body and they get healed. I believe. I sow in faith. So you sow in faith. Some of you, like 50 bucks is a big sacrifice. God will do a lot with it. I've been in meetings just like this, and I've said, all I have is 50. 
and I gave, I said, God, I want to do what that minister is doing. Guess what I do today? I do what that minister is doing. But before I went back to my seat in that meeting in Anaheim, California, somebody walked up to me and gave me, I think they gave me more than I just gave away. They walked up to me and gave to me. God will do it. So you pray over your gift. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then as you sow, so in faith, so in faith for your finances, so specifically, and so in faith for personal and other stuff as well. Come on in, we're having church. It's good. People are getting healed. <laughs> People are happy. Yes. Uh, all right, if you want to get your phone out or whatever, however you're giving, if you want to give by cash, some people do that. Um, I don't know how you do that. Maybe throw it on the front or something. Just throw it over here or whatever. Oh, I'll just put it over here. Oh, my sister, is that okay? If you want to give by check, um, you can give that way. All of this goes to the ministry. It goes to the work of God. Ask him what to do. Hold up your gift. Say, God, I thank you. You're fine. I thank you for seeing. Say, 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 you are ignoring me. I thank you for seed, Lord. You for seed, so I give to your work, Jesus. I give to your work, Jesus. I thank you that this seed multiplies. Thank you that this seed multiplies. multiplies 30, 60, and 100 fold today in Jesus' name. All right, you guys can give however you want. Do you want to sing a special song for like one or two more minutes? I'll dismiss, uh, I'll officially dismiss, but I want to keep praying for people. If you got to go or get your kids, you can. Justin will switch to the key of A. Isn't God good? Yeah. Come on. We just love to celebrate what he does. I want to invite all of you guys to come back tonight at 6 p.m. We're going to have just an intentional time of activation and training. Uh, the timing of this was not accidental. We have our outreach event next weekend. We want all of you to feel commissioned, co-missioned by Jesus Christ himself. That we walk along with him, alongside of him. We walk in the same authority. Everyone say, I walk in the same authority as Jesus. I walk in the same power as Jesus. I walk in the same anointing as Jesus. Believe it. This is who we're called to be. This is how we're called to live. This is how we multiply not our church. We multiply his kingdom. We multiply his nature. We multiply who he is in us. Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's what we want. So we're gonna we're gonna sing one more song. We're gonna close in prayer. I know we were way over today. Thank you guys for being. So Father, we just thank you for what you are doing today. We glorify you, Jesus, and we magnify your name. And we ask that you would just pour yourself out in and through us throughout the rest of this day, this week, and we give you glory. And all God's people said. Amen, amen. If you would like any additional prayer, come forward. We can have Chris and some others pray. God bless you. We're going to sing one song as we go. All the saints and angels
Hey, brother. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you.